All right, welcome to Learning to Cast Metal, Part 2. Uh, this is a series that is documenting my journey uh, as I learned to cast metal. Today we're going to talk about vocabulary, um, and there will be a test at the end. <laughs> and if you don't pass the test, you don't get to watch the pour at the end of the video. You know, there are a ton of words that are used in the metal casting uh, world. And when I first started off, I didn't know what most of them were. Uh, I knew a few of them and then I would invariably, I would get them mixed up and I would say the wrong thing. And just quite frankly, it was embarrassing. Uh, that's not the case anymore. I think I know, <laughs> I think, uh, I think I know most of the words now, or at least a lot of them, enough to get by. Oh, and before I forget, um, it's cast, not casted. You cast a part. You don't cast it apart. Um, you would say things like, look at the part I cast, not look at the part I cast did. It just sounds, sounds ignorant. Don't do it. All right, well, let's get started with the uh, list of words. And as always, there is a gratuitous pour at the end of this video. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot one more thing. Before we get started, we melt metal in something called a furnace. We don't melt metal in something called a foundry. At least not at my house, we don't because I don't have a foundry. A foundry is a place that has furnaces, okay? Foundries have flasks, foundries have sand, foundries have patterns, foundries have all these things. Foundry is where all that work is done. It would be analogous to saying, an anvil and a blacksmith shop are the same thing, right? They're not. They melt in a furnace, not in a foundry. All right, now we can go. <laughs> now we can get started. This is my casting box, and a casting box is called a flask. Flasks are typically made up of two parts, uh, the top part being something called a cope, and the bottom part being something called a drag. If you have trouble remembering them, the drag might be the thing that you would drag across the floor. It's on the bottom. So we'll flip the drag over and we will start to make our mold. And what we mold are things called patterns. And patterns are what we're going to make a part from. This is a single pattern. Uh, sometimes you'll see larger patterns too that are split in half like this one. Uh, it's called a split pattern. Part will go into the uh, drag like this and the other part will go up into the cope. Now I've also taken to starting to print my uh, runners gates and spin traps and that's what I just put in that blue part metal runs across the runner into the spin trap and then rises up into the gate uh, and then will flow into the part this stuff is called parting compound I uh, used to use baby powder or talc until I found out that uh, it causes cancer and this is much more expensive so I have moved to that <laughs> it actually works really well uh, don't let this kitchen implement fool you. This is something called a riddle. Uh, riddle. We're riddling the sand here. And that's basically taking large clumps out of the sand and creating a nice fine sand base to, to push against our pattern and get a nice clean mold. We're getting ready to start filling the, uh, the box in to ram it. Uh, I'm just ramming with my fingertips here just to kind of firm things up a little bit. But we're going to use a ramming tool here to ram the material, the sand, a lot tighter against the pattern. Start with the pointy end and then I'm going to finish it here with the uh, flat side just to smooth things off. And this is a strike off tool or a strike for short. Um, I'm having trouble keeping this thing on the desk, but uh, you'll see strike used in uh, concrete work as well. It's, this is a term that's common to both, uh, both industries. Flip the uh, drag over again. See the parts that we have, the uh, patterns that we have molded. Placing our cope on top of the drag. And now I'm going to put my sprue former in here. The sprue is the um, mechanism by which the metal is going to enter the mold. I'm also putting my, the other half of my spin trap on uh, at this point. A little more sand. You know what that is. And a little more ramming again. Uh, 
I'm cutting my uh, offset pouring basin here. And I think I, I must ram my sand too hard because it always tends to want to do this. It wants to break out. I think I'm ramming too hard. I use green sand. Uh, it is a water, clay, and sand mixture. A lot of people use Petrobond. It is an oil, clay, and sand mixture. And Petrobond you recognize as being an orange sand. You'll see that quite a bit uh, in the casting world. Right now I'm cutting between my offset pouring basin and my sprue. I am cutting a ridge. Uh, the ridge will be like 10 millimeters off the bottom of the uh, basin and it will act as a sort of dam before the metal, giving the metal a chance to fill up and calm down before it enters the sprue. This stuff is called compressed air. <laughs> All right, quick quiz. What are we taking out here? That's right. The runner, the gate, and the spin basement. What about this part? This is the pattern. That's right. And this is me being an idiot, this little line. I left this ridge of sand in the mold. And we're going to see that multiple times. Okay, we're doing a trial close here. Trial close is the essentially the, 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 me the mechanism of closing your mold up, knocking any loose sand, blowing it out, uh, and then we can close it back up, getting ready for the pour. Oh, ugh, I forgot to cut gates. I'm going to cut something called scratch. I'm sorry, vents, not gates. I'm going to cut scratch vents in here. These are just little lines that I'm going to cut into the sand with into the screw just to allow gas to escape the mold as I fill it. And I'm doing it on the far side of the gate. And now we can close it up again for real and get ready for the pour. And again, here's my basin and ridge. You can kind of see them real well there. Now we're going to pour our metal from our crucible into the pour, offset pouring basin. Fills up the ridge. Or goes, uh, you know what it does. That is called a shank. That is what's holding our crucible. These little things are called ingots, but you knew that, didn't you? Open the mold up and see what we got. And we see that I was an idiot again. <laughs> I left that sand in there and it showed up in the mold. Here it is out of the sand. I haven't done anything, any cleanup to it at all. But we're going to take a look again one more time just as a review. This is the offset pouring basin. Uh, we're going to fill our, put our metal is going to pour in there. It's going to flow over that ridge down our sprue. Uh, once it entered from the sprue, it's going to enter something called the runner. Uh, we do a radius on both sides of that, so there's not, it's a nice smooth transition. Metal flows across the runner into the spin trap where it will trap the surge and it will trap any oxides and whatever. You can see my gate here is risen up above the bottom of my runner, so the metal will rise up through the uh, runner and before entering the, the part. Now, this stuff here that we're looking at, you can't really see it because I did a good job. <laughs> it's called flash. And there it is again, me being an idiot. All righty, so we'll throw a little paint on this thing. Throw a little sand job on this guy. And we got us a finished product. I saw this once and I didn't quite understand what it meant, So, but I made a plaque of it. I'm not sure how inanimate objects can make me do stupid things like overeat, but apparently they can, and I will take any help I can get. Okay, well, there you go. A really fast, a really quick vocabulary <laughs> lesson. I hope you were able to keep up. Uh, you can always rewatch it and watch those ads too. I can, I can use the money. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Have a great day. Stay safe.